Hi, I'm Glenn Rogers, and this is Biblical Insights. Today we're going to talk about prayer. What is prayer? How does it work? Why should we pray? Lots of important questions like that about prayer. But before we get into it, actually, I, I want to take just a minute and ask you to help us out by subscribing uh, to our channel and hitting the like button. Those two things are really helpful to us, and we would appreciate it if you could do that. Subscribe and like. Okay, what's this idea about prayer? Uh, many people are not really comfortable praying. They, they, they don't quite know what it is or how, how it works, or they want to be sure they don't say the wrong thing. And, and there are lots of different religious traditions about uh, prayer and different religious groups think very differently about prayer than some other religious groups. So I want to take a moment and read a couple of passages from the New Testament that, that's talking about prayer and, and see what we can learn from that. And then just talk in general about what it is and how it works, uh, because it's a very important part of, of Christians' daily life. Okay, so the text is, we're going to be reading from, uh, as always, is the Simplified New Testament, my translation of Scripture. And the first one that we're going to look at here is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 35. Mark is talking about Jesus, and it says, Early the next morning, Jesus went off by himself to pray. Now, I, I think that there's a, that's a very simple, brief text, but it's a, it's a very important text um, that, that gives us a, a very significant idea here. We've talked about Jesus in a couple of other videos as being uh, God living among us as a human being. So in the incarnation, God became a human being in the person of Jesus. And so as Jesus lives his life and goes about his ministry and everything, that's God living among us. So why would God feel the need to go off by himself and spend time in prayer? And what does that mean? You, you, you have God here on earth talking to God up in heaven, and how, do, how does that work exactly? All right, that, those are good questions, but we're going to save those for an, another video. The, what I want to focus on today is the, the simple idea that Jesus did feel the need to spend time in prayer. You see, it's important to understand that Jesus is God, but it's also important to understand that Jesus is a normal human being. He's 100% God, he's completely divine, but he's also 100% human. He's completely human, just like you and me. And, and so as a human being, he experiences all the same stuff every other human being experiences. He has all the same challenges in life, all the same strengths and weaknesses, the same frustrations, the same uh, worries and concerns, the same, you know, all of this stuff that piles up and gets to be a, a problem and sometimes gets in the way of our uh, relationship with God and how we live, whether we live effectively or not. So Jesus takes time in, in his busy life and ministry to go off by himself and spend time in prayer. So here's the first lesson that we need to learn, right? If, if Jesus, as God living as a human being, if, if he feels the need to spend time in prayer and talk with God, how much more so should we spend time in prayer? How much more time do I need to spend talking with God? How much more time do you need spend talking with God. Okay, so that's, that's the first lesson. Prayer is important. You're going to have a relationship with God. You need to spend time talking with him. Now, the second text we're going to look at is from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. The letter is called Philippians. That's in chapter 4, uh, verse 6. And Paul says, do not be worried and anxious about things. Lay your problems and concerns before the Lord thankful that he is there to help. Okay, so Paul also understood, just like Jesus did, that sometimes life piles up, right? All the stuff of life. You, you have family, you have a job or school, you, you have financial concerns, you have health concerns maybe, you have all, all these different things. You're worried about people, maybe you're worried about your kids, or maybe you're worried about your parents, whatever, or your friends are having challenges in different areas, and all this stuff you know gets to you. Paul says, look, don't, don't let that stuff worry you. Don't be anxious. Lay it before God. That's just another way of saying pray about it, okay? Spend time 
talking with God about your worries, your concerns, the things that you need help with, right? That's a very important part of your life as a Christian. And, and so that, that's something that we, we need to seriously think about as a Christian. How, how much time do we spend in prayer and how do we pray? This is where it gets to be challenging for some people because they get uh, worried about the process of, of prayer. They're not sure maybe what prayer is or how it works. And, and you know, this is God we're talking about. I don't, I don't want to say the wrong thing to God or say it in the wrong way. I, 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 I'm, how do I do this anyway? Okay, so let's spend a few minutes talking about that. Prayer is simply talking with God. That's all it is. That's all it is. It doesn't require any kind of special language. It doesn't require these and thous and shalt and shalt not and doeth and doest and all. Okay, all that old English language that you read in the King James Bible. That prayer hasn't got anything to do with that kind of stuff. Okay. Prayer is simply talking with God. You communicate with God just like you communicate with anybody else, except you can't physically see him, and he doesn't usually speak to you with an audible voice so that you can physically hear his response. But it's talking with God. That's what it is. It's a two-way communication. It's got to be understood as a two-way communication. And it, you, if you're in a relationship with God right? You need to spend time talking with him. How would you feel if you had a relationship with someone or you were trying to have a relationship with someone and they never talked to you? You know, and it, whether it's your, your friend at school or, or one of your siblings, brother or sister or cousin maybe, or it's your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband, your wife, your, your parents or parents talking to kids or whatever, right? Somebody that's special to you, that's important, you want a relationship with this person and you talk to them and they never will respond. They don't talk to you. How would you feel about that? Well, you know, after a while, you, you, you'd probably get frustrated with that. You might even confront them about it and say, hey, what's up with you, right? Come on, talk to me. Or maybe you would just sort of give up and let it go. I, you know, I don't know. It depends on how you handle those kind of situations. But you would know somewhere in there in your heart that there's some, something wrong with this relationship. There isn't much of a relationship because this person won't talk to you. A relationship requires communication. You can't have a relationship with God if you don't talk with God. And you can't just be the one doing all the talking. See, it works both ways. You can't be the one doing none of the talking, but you also can't be the only one doing the talking in the sense that you're doing all the talking and you're not listening, right? You're not waiting for God to respond. And, and it, prayer has to be understood as a, a two-way communication process. You talk to God and, and, and you let God talk to you. Now, how does God talk to you? Well, as I said before, he's probably not going to speak to you in any kind of audible voice where you, you hear, right? It, it, it's a different kind of process. You know, some people think that uh, if you're going to pray to God for something, let's say um, insight, okay, Lord, I got this problem I'm, I'm struggling with and I don't know how to handle it. And, and so help me out with that with you, okay? Help me understand this problem. And they sit there and they wait. Nothing happens. Lord, yeah. Did, did you hear me? Did you hear? I got a problem, right? I need you to help me with this because I don't understand. Can you help, help me out here? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. And they're, they're expecting some kind of immediate, you know, audible response from God. And it doesn't, doesn't work that way. Prayer doesn't work that way. So you, you, you talk to God and then you expect him to respond. How does he do that? Well, if it's not going to be an audible response, you have to understand that it's through the Spirit that lives in you. When you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit is given to you as a gift to live in you. And, and the Holy Spirit is another manifestation of God. God's right there with you. And, and he will help you understand. You, you, in time, you will learn to hear his voice. And, and it's usually simple stuff. It's like, okay, calm down, be patient. This is going to work out. It's okay. You know, read the Bible, spend some time thinking about it. This is all going to work out. Okay, I will be there with you. I will help you with it. I'll give you the strength you need. See, that's the kind of communication you get from God. It's an inward kind of thing where God is communicating with you through his spirit. 
But it you have to understand that it's a two-way thing, and, and you can't just not talk to God in prayer, and you can't utilize prayer as a way for you to talk to God with your wish list and then not expect him to respond to you. See, I, I think one of the misunderstandings that people have about prayer is that they kind of think of God as like Santa Claus, right? That God's up there and, and he's got all the stuff there is and he's got all the power there is. And you say, okay, God, I need this and I need that and I need this over here and I need that over there. And I mean, you know, and you're just, you know, you have this wish list and you toss this up to God and then you wait for him to give you all the stuff you need. Well, see, that, that's not the way a relationship works either. I mean, think about that. If, if somebody had that sort of an attitude about you, uh, maybe a boyfriend or girlfriend or something, and basically you were just there to give them what they wanted, what kind of a relationship is that? That's not the way relationships work. You're not just there as one part of the relationship. You're not just there to give them stuff they want. You see, so someone says, well, then what good is God if he's not going to give me what <laughs> God is there to, to, to love you and to save your soul. That's what good he is. And, and he's there to help you. Uh, and, and he's not there just to give you stuff. Christianity isn't about you getting stuff from God. Christianity is about you having a relationship with God and letting him help you learn and grow and understand and become a better person and to be saved from your sins. That, that's what Christianity is about. And prayer is an intricate part of that. And it's not an easy thing to learn. You, 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 you think about the, the disciples in Jesus' time, and, and you know, you'd think, well, wow, those must have been really spiritual people. They understood all this stuff. They were Jews, and, and they were Jesus' disciples, and so they knew all this stuff. Yeah, no, they, 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 they didn't. One day, the disciples came to him. Jesus' own disciples came and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he said, okay, it's, it's like this. And, and the answer he gave them is what we call the Lord's Prayer. Now, some people not understanding that prayer is simply communicating with God, talking with God, they think, well, okay, if we recite this prayer, then that's good. We're praying with God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. See, that's kind of what Jesus was, was talking with the disciples about. Here's the thing about that, all right? Jesus said, here's how to pray. He didn't say, here's what to pray. Those are two different things, right? He's giving them an example of how to pray, and it was talking to God about things that were a concern for their everyday life. Jesus didn't say, recite this prayer. That's not what prayer is. Prayer, prayer isn't reciting something that's been written down. Prayer is talking with God. What if you were in a relationship with somebody and you weren't quite sure about how to talk with them. So you you went to the, the greeting card store, right? You got a lot of greeting cards. You got one that's said anniversary, one that's birthday, and one that's Valentine's Day, and one that's Christmas, and one that's this, and one that's that. And you got a whole big collection of cards here. And, and they said some really good stuff. You know, people who write greeting cards are pretty smart, very, very insightful, and very romantic people. And they say some really nice stuff, right? So you meet with this person, you, they, they come home from work and say, hi, how was your day? And so you go through your cards and you get a card out. And then and so you read the card to them, right? And they, they look at you and they go, okay, what, what, what was that? What are you doing? Well, okay, so you get another one, right? You, read, you open it, you read another one. How's that one? How's that one? You go, what, what are you doing? Why are you reading cards to me? Talk to me. Okay, I mean, how silly would it be to try to have a relationship with somebody where what you said to them was you reading a greeting card? I mean, that's just silly. That, that doesn't work. And you know it doesn't. Okay, well, when you're praying to God, if you're just reading a prayer that somebody wrote, that's, that's not talking with God. That's not one person in a relationship with another person having a conversation and talking. See, prayer isn't reading a prayer that somebody wrote, e even the one that Jesus used as an example for his own disciples when he said, Here, here's how to pray. He, it wasn't what to pray, it was how to pray. Simple, straightforward, talk to God, tell him what you need. Now, 
Let me give you an example. Uh, a, a few days ago, we did uh, a video uh, where we talked about Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and following. There's a whole list of things there that uh, are, are the kinds of behaviors that you need to incorporate into your life. Okay, so Paul says, contrast those things, the ugly things that you need to get out. He says, contrast those kinds of things uh, with the things the Holy Spirit produces in your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, right? We talked about that passage. Now, suppose you're reading a passage like that and, and you realize about yourself, you say, you know, I'm pretty good at a couple of those things. Um, I'm pretty good with patience. I'm a patient person, and I, and I try to be uh, kind. I'm, I'm good about that. But this uh, self-control part, uh, sometimes I, I don't, I mean, I have this kind of a thing. It's, I'm patient a lot of the times, but sometimes I get really angry. And I kind of, uh, uh. So, Lord, help me with, with this self-control issue. You know, I'm thank you for the patience when I am patient. Thank you for that. But sometimes, you know, I, I get really angry and I fly off the handle and I'm, I don't have as much self-control as I, as I need. Help me with that, okay? You see, it's as simple as that. Prayer isn't any more difficult than that. You just talk to God about whatever, whatever you're worried about, concerned about. But the best things to talk to God about are your spiritual needs. You, you need insight. You need understanding. You need to understand life. You need to understand the world. You need to understand how God wants you to live. You need to understand God, right? There's all these things that you can pray about, and those are the things you need to talk to God about. And it's also good to pray for other people, to help them with their issues and concerns. You see, you can talk to God about anything. There's, there's nothing that you can't talk to God about. He's, he's that kind of a friend, and he, he wants to have a relationship with you that helps you, that makes a difference in your life. He can't do that if you don't talk to him and if you don't listen. That's what prayer is about. I hope you'll take time to pray. That's my thoughts for the day. I hope they were helpful. I hope you uh, enjoyed them. Uh, and I hope you'll watch more of our videos. We're getting a nice little library now, so uh, take some time to, to watch our other videos. Read your Bible, pray, go to church, and may God bless.